Alright, it's time to do something cool. I want to give you a special insider look into a VR development project of mine, but first a little backstory. Last year, uh, if you follow my channel, you probably know I developed a, a VR demo called Interly VR Preliminary Demo. The objective of which was to prove that a shoot 'em up with third person mechanics would work in virtual reality. And that sort of achieved the objective to the point where I decided that I would embark on building a full version of the game Interleave VR. Um, of course, I would start from scratch, so I would start in a blank Unity project and uh, work my way up from there. You know, use everything that I've learned and do something far better and more complex. I started doing this about three months ago, and it's still ongoing right now, so I'm uh, working steady on it. I will eventually, when I have something presentable, release some of it. Um, but until then, there's something that I noticed. I was struggling with a lot of the basic visual stuff. While my programming skills in Unity are pretty much acceptable, I mean, there's nothing I struggle with, and if there's something I don't know, I just consult the reference, I learn it, I apply it, I can deal with it, right? But when it comes to the visuals, there's a lot of basics I didn't get my head around yet. And I figured I would need to do a little bit of learning, a little bit of drill. So I took an empty Unity project. Uh, in it, I put the Oculus SDK 0.4.4 camera rig, and then I started from scratch over there. Now, of course, that project is meant to be very simple and is only a sort of test bed in order for me to practice things regarding lighting, shadows, textures, all those types of textures, and how I can essentially make something look good in Unity. Now, having gone to programming school, um, there's something I used to like to do when a teacher would give you like a drill homework. I would give a theme to it. Like, say the teacher says, write some accounting software. Well, I give a theme, like it'd be the NASA rocket accounting software. You know, always give it a theme that's fun so that the project is not boring and it gives you a little motivation to keep going, although all you're doing is a drill. Well, this is no different. This practice project would have been really batshit boring and I started to put spheres and spotlights just to see shadows, right? I wanted something that was fun, not just to develop on, but to use. And what could be simpler than reimagining the office in the first Five Nights in Freddy's game in virtual reality. That's right, that's what I gave myself as a challenge in this practice project. Uh, in addition to practicing a whole bunch of stuff, I decided to make a very simple crude version of the setting in the office of the first Five Nights at Freddy's. And of course, at the same time, the challenge was to reimagine it so that it would look believable in VR. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here we go. This is the super bare office right now. I started this last week and I was having fun, you know, reproducing the dimensions and so forth. I didn't get like any of the artwork on the walls, like the puzzles and the tables are pretty bare right now, but I'll add stuff over time as I find them, you know, stuff that's appropriate. And of course, eventually I want to add the camera feature. I'll go on about that. I'll go on about the lights as well. Uh, but um, first let's get to what I'm practicing. One of the first challenges of it reimagining the office of Five Nights at Freddy's in VR is the lighting. And that was perfect. Why? Because that's what I want to learn in Unity. I want to learn lighting and shadows. So perfect. I want to practice it, right? Um, now, the light in the first Five Nights at Freddy's, if he were to have used the 3D engine, if the developer uh, were to have used the 3D engine, the light would have been too bright. And... Um, on the side, I did not have a desktop fan model. So I sort of knocked two birds with one stone here. I wanted the fan and the light thing, you know, because it's funny. In the first game, you see the fan and the light. They're completely useless and they draw power and you can't turn them off. So I wanted a similar humoristic concept. And uh, at the same time, I wanted to practice my lights. So I did a ceiling fan. I had a model for a ceiling fan. And I figured I'd make it like this cheap ass looking ceiling fan that's always wobbling around with a cheap ass spotlight that's not bright enough. Um, because uh, here, here's the deal. Here's where I actually practiced with these lights. It was pretty fun to do. Uh, first off, I gave them shadows. So the shadows on the floor and the ceiling. That's working out pretty good. 
And second off, I needed those lights to not spill out too far. I don't want them to go through the windows because I don't want you to be able to see through the window until you actually make use of the big hall lights. Um, I want you to be in the pitch black. If there were to be any light around here, I would be able to see in the hall and I would not need the light to see that I've got an animatronic waiting for me in the door frame. So it has to be pitch black. So I had to work on the light ranges and make this little macabre looking sort of desk fan with a light on it that's wobbling around. And to make matters worse and, and, and sort of recreate that comical effect, look at where the light cutout ends when it wobbles. It's right underneath that window frame. That's right. It touches the window frame, giving you that slim hope that maybe that light's going to sweep over the window without you having to hit the light switch. But of course, it never happens. So I thought that would be comical to include and was sort of uh, recreate that Five Night at Freddy's comical aspect of the office, all while making sure that it works in VR. So it has to be believable. And I also figured like basic things, like I put the newspaper and the donuts on the desk because you're a security guard, so you eat donuts, obviously. And there's the phone, I will eventually put in a monitor, I'll get onto that later. But uh, just right off the bat, you know, I got to practice a few lights and uh, I was modeling the office around it as I was putting the lights so that I'd have a, a proper area to practice my lights in. And uh, then I moved on to doing some other things because I do want the setting to be really fun to use and thus more or less uh, have some content from the game. Thing is, I did include two of the animatronics, Bonnie and Chica. But the problem is, is the crude animatronics management script that I made is kind of aggressive right now. And it probably has them, with the time I've been running this, uh, it has them showing like at the windows or even at the doors by now. It's been a while. So I'm gonna describe the mechanics I got working in here and then I'll reset and show them to you. Uh, Cause I do want us to use the lights in the halls as the animatronics come at us from their initial location. It's gonna be more fun that way. Um, in the meantime, now I could not use the mouse pointer like in the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, which makes you panic, try to go from light to light to turn the lights on. I needed to use a look to select reticle. Uh, reason being is the most intuitive way to use uh, this in virtual reality. And, um, and it's just sort of becoming standard by now. So uh, I got the door buttons here, and if I look at them, they light up. And if I press my space bar, that would be the action key. They do nothing right now because I don't have any doors. So here and here, there's big door frames, and there's no doors, so they do not work yet. But I do plan on making them work eventually as I uh, ramp up this little project just to be more fun and to try more complicated things. Um, but the light buttons do work. So if I stare at the light buttons and press the space bar, I'm going to turn them on. But I won't do that right now. I don't want to spoil anything. But now you know how it works. Now, the way that I made it challenging, because right now you can go from light to light with the reticle. Unlike the first Five Nights and Freddy's game, you can do this really quickly. Well, I kept the humoristic aspect and I sort of kept the challenge there at the same time. These lights, they take a lot of power. That's why you, they drain your meter. Uh, they work on a capacitor, kind of like a, a, a camera flash. So they need to load a bunch of energy and then they use it up all at once and then they run out of energy and need to be reactivated once more. So they take about a second and a half to light up and then they light up for three seconds and then they turn back off and you need to repeat the process. Every time you hit that switch, it takes about a second and a half to two seconds for the light to turn on in the first place. So that sort of reproduces the feeling of panic you got in the first game from trying to even make it to the light in the first place. Whereas here you can go real quick. Well, the light does not turn on quickly. So I do something similar with the doors, obviously, because I do want to keep the sort of feeling of panic. And if I am to implement the camera system, because I wanted to be able to practice in Unity, taking a camera, putting it somewhere else than the player in the game world, and having that camera project what it's seeing in the game world onto a texture. 
And of course, there's no better way to practice this than to try to make the security camera system in this game. This is one of the things on my checklist, so it falls in perfectly with this theme. So the way I would, I, I plan on doing this is I would have a monitor on the desk. You would need to, kind of like the switches, stare at the monitor, press the space bar that would bring up your camera panel, and then you would use the arrows to switch around the cameras, and then you would press space again to dismiss the camera panel, thus being allowed to once more use the lights and the doors. So, let's get, uh, I don't have the doors now, I don't have the camera system, but I do have the lights and I do have two animatronics, so let's go take a look at what this looks like. All right, so let's have at it here. Turn on the light, I clicked there, it took about two seconds for them to turn on. Let's do the right side. Oh shit, Chica's already here. Hey, she got me by surprise, I didn't expect that. Let's go see if Bonnie's here already. Oh, Bonnie's not here. Bonnie's on lunch. Bonnie's actually set to be more aggressive than Chica. So right now it's my computer trolling with me, picking different randomizer values. So, uh, oh, and here comes Bonnie. Ah, oh shit, I didn't expect her to be at the door, or it to be at the door. I expected the window. And this is my own software, and it creeped me out right there. You, you, I didn't expect you there, dumbass. Uh, let's take another three second look at the rest of the room. There's even your coat rack there. Because you're a security guard, right? You wear one of those hats. And uh, there we go. Let's just play with it. Ah! Ah, shit! That's the first time you do that to me. Because since I, cause I sort of lowered the probability of that happening and it wasn't happening anymore. And, uh, I did not expect that. That is so cool. So I got both of them. So right, Oh, yeah. And they can actually move back as well. They can actually decide to go back where they came from. Um... But uh, that's it. They can't jump scare right now, so you can't really lose the game because you don't have the doors, so it's not very fair to make you lose the game. But you can get a sort of spook from them showing up at your door frame or even leaving. You know, you turn the light on, you, you got that anticipation thing and they're going to be there and they're not. Now, uh, if you want to actually experience this in virtual reality, if you have an Oculus Rift DK2 and you're really interested please mention it in the comments if there's enough interest i'll try to make a public build of this as i go along and add stuff into it now because it's very basic and crude and at the current stage incomplete like wildly incomplete i don't want to do that but if people say like, hey i really want to take a look at this you know i might actually be willing to share as this is not my game concept this is not my my idea originally for a game this is just something i'm doing for practice and i really really won't mind sharing it so if someone wants to see this i'm only going to share it if people actually ask i mean i'm not going to go and post it on my website as a product or anything like that so if anyone's interested i might actually get you a link there if you want to download yourselves a copy and uh, whatever if i do some more work on it and get some more stuff done uh, maybe it can be more fun and actually start coming close to feeling like you're playing, let's say, one night of the first game. One full night, you know, with the power meter, the doors and everything, and, and all the rooms. Maybe I'll get there eventually, but right now it's just, just got that, that funny little gimmick that the animatronics move around. And you can actually be surprised turning those lights on and off. And of course, when the lights go out, it is spooky as hell in here because you cannot see the doors nor can you see through those windows although that that light gives you the smallest little tiny hope that maybe but no no you don't you need to turn them lights on to know what's behind there and uh you won't until you do use those lights so that's it a uh, very basic concept my practice project i figured i'd share a lot of people like this game and if uh, folks are interested, as I ramp this up, maybe I'll make it available to the public. Let me know if uh, you're interested. Those with a DK2 might want to take a look at this firsthand, you know, to get the feeling. The stereoscopic video is really good, but it may not do justice to what you would experience in virtual reality. So that's it. We'll see you soon. Oh, man, you fucking every time.